10 penalties and two block punts, even against uh, you're playing a caliber team like that, that's not a recipe to win the game. Uh, so obviously we've got to clean those things up. Uh, the penalties, the block punts, um, the attitude, the demeanor, the response, um, disappointment, hurt. Uh, for me, obviously, uh, as a leader of the program, take great responsibility um, in getting the things cleaned up. And uh, the biggest piece, too, and I just told the guys, is it's a five-day week right now. we got a five-day week uh, to put this game to bed and start on the next opponent. And uh, so we've got a lot of work to do to clean those things up and uh, just go from there. Okay, questions, if you could, please uh, take a microphone, raise your hand. We'll start right here with Rod. Rod, Rod. Hey, Jeff, uh, when Charlie Thomas went out of the game, sure. he had nine tackles and a little over half. Yep. Score was 14 to 10. It seemed like the defense did not get any stops after that. Gotcha. Uh, we think very highly of Charlie Thomas in this program and uh, – Playmaking ability, um, leadership ability. Um, he was very powerful in the locker room uh, as well. And, uh, you know, so we just got to um, – Demetrius Knight came in and, uh, you know, played his role. Uh, really good player. But, you know, obviously when you lose a player of the caliber of Charlie, um, you know, that hurts. Coach, come in. Out of halftime, offensively, that's where you guys find your stride. You got yep. your first score of the game. Um, what did you tell your guys at the half, and what did you feel changed for you guys to kind of lose the stride offensively? It was actually the um, exact thing that we said we were going to do coming out of halftime was kick the ball off, get a three and out, and then drive down and score. The guys did it and, uh, you know, just got to consistently put together – um, drives and not hurt ourselves. So those are things, you know, obviously we got to clean up. Uh, we spent an inordinate amount of time um, with crowd noise in the weeks leading up to this because we knew it was going to be uh, a loud environment. Um, so you go back through and try to think through all the different things we could have done um, to cut down on self-imposed, uh, you know, uh, things to hurt us. And, uh, you know, obviously we got to do a better job. And I've got to do a better job as the head football coach and uh, we'll continue to learn from those things. And um, Given, I know you, you made a point of attention to detail on those things, you know, what does it say that you had the penalties on the, yeah. the block? I mean, it's, it's very, very frustrating, very disappointing, and, uh, you know, has been addressed, will continue to be addressed, and, uh, you know, the guys in there are committed to doing that. So, um, but it falls on me, and... Uh, I will work relentlessly to get that cleaned up. Um, Coach Collins, was there a pattern on the two block punts that you could detect? Yeah, there, I mean, there's some things that, you know, we made adjustments to. Um, and then the second one, the adjustment didn't get made. We'll get it cleaned up internally. Um, you know, so those kind of things will, um, you know, the schematics of that we will keep in-house. Um, but they're the... the Got to get that fixed because those things cannot happen. Um, you cannot have block kicks, block punts, uh, those kind of things. So, uh, very disappointing. You had a lot of self-inflicted wounds on offense, some drops, and then obviously the penalties you've mentioned. Yep. Just is there anything you can put your finger on that you saw out there, or was it just mental mistakes, or guys just not finishing? Plays? Yeah, I mean, the, the the biggest thing with the false starts is the. Um, you know, they were doing a good job of stemming and moving the front and those kind of things. And, uh, you know, just playing those situations uh, with poise and just staying focused, doing your assignment, listen to the snap count, to see the ball snapped, uh, all those kind of things. Coach, you had uh, your defense being put in some real difficult situations, sure. block punt and some things like that. Talk about a little bit of the resiliency you did see with sure. a couple of big stands and getting off the field. Yeah, I think the and the one of the key things I think, uh, even though it's a very disappointing loss um, and we're very uh, upset about it and hurt, there were things to build on. Um, you know, so we've got to just find that balance of making sure we fix the things that have to be fixed, but also building upon the things that were good in tonight's game. Um, but you know, right now nobody wants to hear that. I don't want to talk about it. Um, just the things that 
we need to clean up. We're going to work relentlessly hard to clean up. And again, we've got five days uh, to get this done um, before we play next Saturday night in Bobby Dodd Stadium. Coach Raphael from the three-point conversion, you just said it. You only have five days. Yep. How do you do that? I mean, how do you go about that as far as fixing the, the um, sure. you know, mistakes, but yet still focusing on West Carolina? Yep. So, I mean, I've been through this before, um, playing on short weeks. We've got the plan. We've got the schedule. Obviously, we've got a uh, – tomorrow will be an off day for the guys, so we have to give them an off day. So tomorrow will be their off day. Um, but knowing our guys, they'll come in on their own and watch the tape and um, start watching tape on, you know, Western Carolina. Um, and then we'll get to work on Wednesday when we can get uh, – officially begin the work week. But obviously, it's going to be a challenge. Um, you know, and we just got to rise to that challenge. Coach, with three timeouts left at the end of the half and with Clemson getting the kick to start the second half, was there any thought to burning one right there and maybe trying to take a couple sure. of shots? There, there was just the, um, you know, it was fourth and four right around midfield um, with the possibility, and there was the – the situation with the clock, and if you guys remember, that was like a, that was like an eight-minute ordeal trying to figure out how the clock was going to be um, administered. Um, you know, so you know there was the defensive was playing uh, good relative to you know having a punt blocked and putting them in bad field position. Um, so there was discussion, there was thought about that, um, but the best thing to do was to go uh, into the half because it ended up on the eight-yard line. Wouldn't have been a lot of time anyway. The um, the three timeouts you used in the second half, sure. uh, the last one, you know, with I think thirteen oh eight left in the fourth. What prompted you having to burn those so quickly? Yeah, so the 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 last one, um, if you guys recall, it was fourth and six, uh, right around the thirty seven yard line, um, and in the past, right around that area, they've had a formation that they've run a trick play out of. They shifted to it, um, saw it. And bang the timeout, regrouped, and then they didn't run the fake uh, after that. Um, there was another situation earlier. Um, we don't ever want to have a situation that could be an explosive play because we're misaligned. I saw we were misaligned, wanted to make sure that we did not have um, something very unfortunate happen to us during that drive, uh, banged it, and uh, got it corrected. Um, so obviously you want to keep the timeouts as long as you can, but you also don't want to put yourself – uh, in harm's way if you don't have to um, at key points of the game. I, the one thing that I, I thought was a positive takeaway for you guys today was the pass rush was pretty significant, and really DJ made two plays kind of sure. out of that, that that changed probably the momentum of the game as yep. well, particularly the one play where he got the ball out where yep. he was yep. dead to rights. Um, just talk about what worked with the pass rush, why you feel like you guys were more effective today. That's been probably the most effective sure. pass rush you've had. I think, you know, obviously uh, the development of the players, um, and we've got really good players up along the defensive front and the second-level defenders that we were activating and some pressures. Um, but I thought there were some things that we dialed up that got home and, uh, you know, just got to make sure that we get uh, the quarterback down and not let him scramble and do the – uh, really athletic things he's able to do because there was two of them um, that should have been a sack, but really good players make really good plays. And, uh, you know, those are learning experiences for the guys, um, you know, to make sure we finish those uh, plays and, you know, get the sacks when we got them dialed up. Coach, we'll go ahead and wrap you okay, up. So thank you. Got you guys the players now. Keon, this was your first healthy game at Georgia Tech. Um, just – how did it feel? You got a lot of pressure, got some sacks. Just how did it feel to finally kind of be able to, to play up to your potential a little bit? Um, personally, I didn't feel like I had my best game. So I felt like I was um, moving slow, not making the right read assignments that I was doing, and that's unacceptable. So I need to uh, go watch film and, and work to come better next week. Coming out of the locker room in the second half, how confident were you guys, especially after the way you played in the first half? Uh, we we was confident. We was uh, prepared for a thirty minute uh, battle. We was confident all the way through the game. Really, we had faith in our plan and our confidence. Um, it just 
got the short end of the stick tonight and go back uh, tomorrow, watch the film, correct what needs to be corrected, come back next week. For both of you guys, how difficult is it when you have a punt block short field situation or a turnover? You were in that situation twice tonight, and that kind of was really a difference, I think, in the game in a lot of ways with the two two easy scores they got off the, the block punts. Just how difficult is that situation as a defensive player when you get thrown back into the field like that when you maybe expect to have some decent field position to work with? Um, so for us, our defensive motto is put the ball down. So it doesn't matter what situation we are in, they – they're not supposed to score, and that's the standard. So the standard is the whole team's to zero points and zero yards. And and at the end of the day, we just have to go play with the situation and, and don't cry about it, don't uh, kind of moan about it, and just deal with it. For both of you guys, uh, what do you think was working early that maybe kind of shut down that Clemson offense early in the game and maybe what changed in the second half that uh, allowed them to kind of go on a run? Uh. First half, first half, uh, we just played played our technique, played our defense. Uh, we knew they liked to run DJ. Um, he was we was pretty sound on that and everything. And uh, on the run game, we sound and everything. Second half, uh, they went in, and made some adjustments. Um, I, I don't even think second half they really opened up. They had a, some some good, a couple of good explosives, and that's just how the ball rolled, really. But um, I, 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 um, I. Yeah, I, that's about it, really. Um, for you guys, of course, you talk about the confidence all game. When team when they went up fourteen zero, what were you guys kind of telling each other just so you could stay on the same page and continue to do what you guys could do? So, as a defense, our motto is defense wins championships. So, you take let the offense do offense, and we're going to worry about our defense. So, we just. We had a mindset of continue stopping them, continue playing our game, and let everything work out for itself. Obviously, tonight it didn't work out in our favor, but we still have confidence that we have a good defense and feel good moving forward into the later games. With the, uh, the short week before the Western Carolina game and a day off tomorrow, is it better to have a game like that earlier in the year, you know, before your – you're really banged up and that type of thing. You can maybe you can come back a little quicker earlier in the year. Um, uh, I'm not sure. Would you ask it? So. <laughs> you, you, you had a short week, right? Uh, is it better to have that short week earlier in the year before you get banged up and you're still pretty healthy? Um, short week is a short week in football. Really, still got to prepare. I mean, I guess so. If you think about it like that, before the Knicks and stuff come, then uh, yeah, but. Um, I'm pretty sure we're going to have some nicks and bruises after this one, too. Ace, uh, early in the game, you got you forced the fumble. At least it looked like you forced the fumble. There seemed to be some indecision about that. But do you, do you recall that play? Can you describe that play for us? Um, yeah. I, uh, they they ran the quarterback. I think it was a quarterback counter. And um, uh, Charlie, I think it was, came tackled him from the side, and he was falling and tried to stretch the ball out. And I just – that's our trained behavior. You try to uh, get the ball out, punch the ball, our punch uh, techniques and stuff. So you t I took a shot on the ball, and it worked out for me. The uh, ace, how much did it make a difference when Charlie went out of the game? Because he was a little bit of your eraser tonight. He was making a lot of good plays, and particularly in the run game. Just how much did that impact you guys? I know you guys have a lot of confidence in Demetrius, but – Charlie is kind of that freak sideline to sideline guy for you guys. How much did that impact not having him? Because I think it was fourteen ten, was it or something? When when he went out and then they kind of went on their run. Uh, that was definitely a big blow. Charlie's a uh, like you said a great player. Uh, not only a great player, but he's a leader on the defense, a vocal leader, uh, emotional leader, everything. So that definitely hurt hurt the defense uh, when he went out. He's losing a great player, but. Uh, next man up mentality. Uh, D Knight came in and um, he he held it down. He did what he uh, had to do and gave it his best. And we just keep moving forward. And we get Charlie back second half next week and keep going from there. Middle of the third quarter, I think the score was fourteen ten. Either or, you had um, had him third down and third and ten, and you all pressured DJ. Had basically almost had him sacked, and he turned around and. Sh 
flipped it to Shipley and he got the first down. Do you feel like that changed the momentum in you all's eyes? Um, well, one, that was just a hell of a play by him. We had him sacked and he, he just made a play. Uh, good players make plays. Um, as far as it changing the game, I don't think it really did. Our, our defense still had a next play mentality. So you, you aren't going to uh, stop him on every third down. And you just have to deal with that. And we just went next one up, and then we I still feel like, as a defense, we still play solid after that. Hey, guys, uh, despite the final score, it, it seems like you guys have continued to point out that you guys feel really good about your defense. Um, what are some of the positives you can kind of take from this? And, and, and I guess why do you feel so confident going forward that this defense is kind of what you think it is? Um, I feel like our defense is the nucleus of this team. Um, not saying anything to the offense, but – I feel like our defense is where most of our seniors are, and we have a lot of that senior leadership. And I feel like, as a whole, we stayed co- cohesive and as a unit tonight, and we didn't we didn't kind of split apart. And that's the biggest challenge in teams when situations like this happen, just splitting apart. But as a defense, I feel like we stayed together because of our leadership. Um, and I think going forward, that'll be a big part of who we are as a as a team, not even just the defense. Uh, Ace, are you? Mentioned a lot in the in the preseason, even in the spring, about communication needing to be better. Can you kind of give me a sense of of how that worked for you guys in terms of everybody being on the on the same page? It seemed from watching it that seemed like you guys were in the right places most of the time. Um, yeah, great defense is a defense that communicates um, and makes sure that everybody's on the same page. Um, I feel we did a pretty good uh, job of that tonight. I wouldn't say it was perfect. Definitely needs more things cleaned up, but. Being on the same page is the first step of being a good defense, and I think uh, I think we did some good things uh, tonight, and we just got to keep building on that, keep communicating, and make sure everybody on the same page. Okay. Awesome. EJ, what was it like to get that first catch under your belt? Oh, it felt good. It felt good to be back. Definitely, um, it was a lot of it was a lot of mixed emotions in there, but I'm glad I put some points up for the team. What, what was the design on the play where you scored your touchdown? Um, you know, corner robbers are covered too. They were sitting down low. Um, this way, really just ordinary football stuff. Got into the hole. After they went, up, I believe it was after they went up fourteen zero. Um, Jeff Sims and offense just seemed to be clicking. He was completely a lot of passes. For you, what do you feel was able to help get things going? Because it seemed like you guys were able just to just move the football all night. You just weren't able to kind of finish. Right. Um, just really just communicating, just keeping each other up the whole the whole game. Um, you know, people see people, they put their head down, stuff like that. There's always somebody to come around, make sure everybody's uplifting and uh, – we're just pushing down the field. So just sit there, just keep communicating, keep make sure everybody's on the right page. Uh, talk about your quarterback uh, tonight. Obviously had to deal with a lot of pressure, but kind of stuck in the pocket, made some nice moves to deliver guys, to deliver ball to guys like you, Nate, some others as well. What did you think of his play tonight? Um, Jeff, is, Jeff is a soldier. I like Jeff a lot. Um, you know, he's he'll sit inside there. Of course, everybody knows he can use his legs too. But, you know, being a quarterback, you got to sit there, sit in the pocket, and just deliver passes outside of it. So, um, Jeff is good. Jeff is growing too. I've seen Jeff grow a lot, especially since I've been here. And I'm just proud of him. I'm glad he's my quarterback. Okay. Um, it looked like there were a couple of balls you, you were, had your hands on, weren't able to bring in, and a couple of other guys did too. How much of a factor do you think that was? You know, not you know, not being able to make some of the catches that you maybe could have made on another different day. Yeah, um, those catches definitely we we know what we left on the field. Um, you gotta sit there, just go to practice, and just practice on the little things. We know that we beat ourselves a lot today, and in game one we're gonna make mistakes or whatever, but uh, we're gonna come back stronger next week for sure. In saying that, although you are lost, but knowing that you were able to drive the ball throughout the game you know, against that type of defense, how gratifying is that? It is. Um, our game one, their game one, you know. Um, it was good. It was a good feeling, you know, but we just got to sustain drives, stay on the field and whatnot, and just finish drives. When we do that, I feel like we'll be a real good football team. 
you've obviously been on both sides on on two different sides of a rivalry with Clemson now. Um, just you know, I guess kind of how do you feel like you measure where Georgia Tech is at now after playing them? You obviously played them at the end of last year too. Just kind of where do you feel like you guys are right now as a program? You know, a game into the season, just do you feel like the, you like where the progress is, where the team's headed, and that kind of thing? Yeah, I like the progress a lot. Um, just in there, especially watching the film from last year and whatnot. I've seen a lot of people on this roster grow, and it's real, real admiring. So it just makes me want to be better every day, and the energy they come with every day just is willing to work. So uh, take the energy, make it contagious, and hopefully just pass it on to everybody else too. You talked about moving the ball and sustaining drives. What what went into the struggles on third down? Ooh, I'm, not, I'm not sure about that one. Uh, you were two for, two for 16 on third down. It seemed like you were able to move the ball, and then third down came along, and for whatever reason, you know, you weren't able to convert. Oh, I, I had no idea we were two for 16. Um, I'm, not really sure, um, I'm not really sure about that one. Sure. Um, it seemed like you guys had a lot of quick-hitting stuff, uh, you know, getting rid of the ball quickly for Jeff. I, I'm guessing that was a part of – that was stressed by by Coach Long of you know just given Clemson's defense and the pressure they're going to bring that you want to make sure you were getting the ball out quick is that is that accurate? Right, Clemson has um, a very good up front line and they they give they're giving us a uh, space and cushion so why not take what they give us first? So um, yeah, we knew that Jeff was going to be pressured all night. Clemson is known for their front, but uh, it was all part of the game plan and I feel like we executed to a certain extent, but we just left stuff on the field that we should execute it. Yeah, I'm just curious about uh, execute off share wide receiver, but is it – how frustrating is it for just the penalties? And, I mean, it looked like – Coach talked about how much you guys prepared for the environment and the crowd and just trying to make, make sure everything is in correct standing. I mean, to have those penalties, what can you kind of attribute that to? Yeah, the penalties definitely hurt us. It's definitely put us setbacks and stuff like that where we didn't want to be, especially to begin the game and where to start off the ball with. But um, this is really just, really just responding to those penalties or whatnot. We got to cut them down. We know we do, and we're gonna definitely going to emphasize that at practice for sure.